Brother Downing is coming now to teach us our Sunday school lesson. Brother Downing. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. I am glad to be in the house of the Lord today. As Brother Spain has already said, but uh, it still rings true even if you say it several times. It's good to be in his house. On a Sunday morning, that's where we should be. Amen. In his Amen. house. Honoring him, worshiping him, thanking him, maybe even obeying him, and be in his spirit. Yes. Feel yes. his touch and feel yes. his love. Yes. We had some uh, coming to church today. We had some showers, a little rain, and things like that, which we all welcome. The beauty of a, of a rain shower is that not only does it feed the plants, but it washes away the, the dirt and grime and dust. I've asked you this question one time several months ago. You're in church today. Do you need a shower? <laughs> not often you get asked that in church. But we come to church and we have the grime of the world on us for the week. And we deal with the with people and, and those who are not in not not in church and have no concern for church out in the world and all the things that the world has to offer. And sometimes you come into the house of God and just say, Lord, give me a shower of your blessing. Yes. To wash away that grime and dirt and filth so that I can feel clean again. Clean in your spirit. Amen. I'm glad he gives us that gives us that opportunity. Yes. Gives us that opportunity to to come to him in worship, to feel his touch come to him in need and to feel his healing touch and to come to him when we need answers come to him when we need guidance Amen. I'm glad today that I have someone that I can fall back on Thank you. I have I have good friends I have a family that I think are concerned about me most of the time <laughs> you know, concerned about me except when they start telling me that be healthy and whatnot like that. But anyway, I have a family and those who I know I can I can fall back on, but I need help and I need guidance. But even beyond that, I have that eternal guidance, that eternal help that will help me in this life, but also in the life to come. And I'm glad I can reach out to him anywhere, anytime, and he is always there. I'm so thankful for you for his love and his mercy today. I have just a couple of scriptures I'd like to read for you, if I could. The first one is in Luke, the 21st chapter, and the 25th and 26th verse. Except that's not the right page. Ezekiel, yeah, Ezekiel, the 30th, I'm sorry, Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, and the seventh verse. Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thou, and all thy company, that is, that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. Be a guard unto them. And the next scripture is in 1 Timothy 6:12. Fight the good fights of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hath professed a good profession before many witnesses. Amen. Unto the reading, can you say amen? Amen. amen. God bless you. You can be seated. I want to describe a, a little bit to you about my early years, not necessarily myself, but the situation as it was then. When I, when I grew up, when I grew up as a as a young boy, this has been a long time ago now. This is in the in the early fifties. Can you imagine the time when when homes were never locked? Mm -hmm. Homes were never locked. Right. Uh -oh. and, and schools. You know, our, we lived in a neighborhood. You know, a reasonable neighborhood, but there were no fences. I mean, the only people you, you could tell who had dogs because they had fences. 
Yeah. If you didn't have a fence, if you didn't have a dog, there were no fences. And we children, we covered the neighborhood. I mean, we wandered that neighborhood oh, one yes. end, one yes, end to the other, you know, several blocks in all in, in, in all directions, yep. and, and in, go inside. People would just walk in, and, and our next door neighbor were the, the, the Cheneys. They had a boy there named uh, their, their son was named Richard. He was about my age. We were good friends, and I'd be out playing. I said, Where, "Where's Richard?" And I, go, I want to go see her. So I just go. Through, I just walk in the front door and just walk right in. Yeah. And say, Miss Cheney, is right. Richard here? And she say, No, Bobby, he's out playing somewhere. You know, just walk in. Yeah. With with no, yeah. no, no concern at all. Nice. And and I can remember. Yeah, and, and you know, we 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 wandered the neighborhood, and I could hear. I could still hear Miss Cheney. When it started getting kind of dark, but we you know, we we played that we couldn't see in front of us. And she'd come to the door and say, Richard! Just as loud as she could. And somewhere out, out the distance you'd hear, Coming mama! Yeah. Something like that. Or, oh, yeah. or she didn't, if, she, if there was no answer, there was no answer if she saw me, Bobby, do you know where Richard is? I said, he's, I think he's at the school, Miss Janey. Well, go get him. Okay, even our school, our elementary school in the neighborhood, us guys, us kids used to go down and, and after school, and we'd go in and just walk through the school. There was no no keys, no locks, no nothing. A time when there was probably more freedom, I guess. Yes. But uh, you know, just to show you how things have changed, I brought something. Bill Smith would appreciate this. This is a knife. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a good one. You know, it's like this. My dad gave me that the day I turned ten years old. Oh, wow. So wow. it is sixty-nine years old. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, wow. But the reason he gave me that, gave me this, is because, and for some reason in our environment where it was, it was just traditional. When a boy turned ten years of age, you gave him a knife. Oh. The father gave him a knife. And all the kids in my class, all the boys in my class, we had we got some kind of knife, either a knife like this or a you know a good sized pocket knife. But the funny thing is, the strange thing is, we took them to school. Yes. You know, and, and during recess we'd be playing knives out there, throwing these knives around. And can you imagine that happening now? Take that school now, you get forty years in jail. Lifetime. <laughs> But it, it just, that's the way it was in, in a long time ago. Peaceful. Long time ago, longer than I care to Same. think about. Even as a young adult, though, when I got, got older, got into high school, got a car, you know, the car I bought, the car I drove all the way through school, I could not like it. The key, the key would work, but you know, they, they used to, remember the cars used to have these bent windows on the front? Oh, yeah. You know, and they had the latches and five. Lashes were broken up, so anytime my car was locked, I just reach in and unlock it and go yeah. get in. Yeah. But uh, we never had to lock. That's right. uh, we never locked a car. My the whole time I was at home before oh. we I met I married, I never had a key to our house. Never had a key to our house. We just and in those years when Shirley and I were dating before we got married. I confess that there was times when I didn't get home until two o'clock or so at night, and I would I would walk in the door, you know, just walk right in. And uh, of course, back in those days, there was no air conditioning. We had an attic fan with a timer on it. I remember this, my dad, and it had a timer, and he always said it would shut off about two o'clock in the morning because he figured it'd be cool enough after that. <laughs> and I'd come in, and I knew I knew that thing was about to shut off. I, I would reach around the corner and turn it just a couple more hours <laughs> and then go to bed just to give me a chance to kind of cool off before the fan went off. And you know, it, it, one more in, uh, example. Even as uh, after we moved to Wyoming, and this would be in the, in the 
early 70s. After a while, I got into, I started selling real estate, became a real estate broker, and used to list houses, you know, for sale, just like they do today. And I can't tell you how many times, how many times I, I, I you know, listed this home for these people, and I said, okay, Mr. Ms. Jones, uh, I need, you know, for the lockbox, I need a set of keys for the lockbox. And they'd say, we don't have any keys. You don't have any keys? No. No, we don't. I mean, our, we don't have any problem with this neighborhood. And, and, and it, it, we, can't, we can't imagine nowadays. Think how, it, think how it is now. Oh, yeah. If someone, if someone comes close to my house now, mm -hmm. my phone is going to tell me here. It's going to show me, it's going to be a picture. It's going to show me a video of that person walking up to my house. That's right. You know, in my alarm system, you, you know, you crack a door in my, or a window in my house, and five minutes later, there's going to be cops at the front door, whether we're there or not, although they're going to call and let me know. And, you know, nowadays, we, we, we guard our homes, we guard our, our cars, and we lock our, we have alarm systems on our cars. In our lives. And, 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 you know, to a certain extent, you know, with the concealed weapons permits and things like this, of course, nowadays, you don't need that in Texas. You can carry a weapon with you if you want to. It's just, uh, and even, even our schools, you know, back, back when we used to run through the school after, after hours, Unfortunately, nowadays our schools are having to become fortresses, yeah. you know, to protect our children right. against people who uh, I don't know what the what the reasoning is. Except there's a it, it just tells me that the devil is alive and well, yes. you know, and, and, and affecting many, 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 many people. Think about our yards. You know, back in those days we had you know no fences. Nowadays. You know, most of it has six foot cedar fences all the way around the back of our yards. Yeah. You can't, you can, you can, you can live next to your neighbor for 10 years and never know who they are. And uh, we're on guard at all times. Absolutely. It's just, uh, even, and even in our normal shopping, you go to Walmart or a gas station or places like this, I, I warn Sister Shirley, every time she walks out of the house, be aware of what's around you. Absolutely. Be aware of what's around you. Yeah. Make sure the car is locked. Make sure your purse. Make all this other stuff that, unfortunately, we, you know, years ago we never thought about. But now we have to think about it. Yes. Now yeah. we have to think about it. We fear today, today we are, the, the world is fearful. But I guess maybe that may not be the best way to put it, is that we fear. Not only for our, our safety per se, but now you know we worry about you know, we hear all the stories about inflation and prices are going up. And I saw an ad in the paper yesterday. If you if you're a back to school shopper, you have kids going back to school, you know, I mean price you're gonna be shocked when you walk in the door to find something for your kids because the prices that have gone up. We worry about our jobs, we worry about the, the war in the, in the uh, all these, I, I keep track of the news, the people worried about the war in the Ukraine. Yes. And the fact that, you know, the, 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 the European Union has said, if Putin puts one foot onto a, a European Union country, we're gonna respond. And, and that this, you, people are worried about, is this, is this localized war, going to expand, expand to something more serious. And we worry about things like this. And 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 then when you read then you read the news or watch the news and now we have the opportunity to worry about weather and worry about in Texas we can worry about the grid system is the electricity going to fail us? You know, again, again, yeah again. And and uh, I don't know if you've been keeping track of the uh, news concerning electricity, speaking of electricity, mm -hmm. you know, if you, the next time you get a new, a, a new electrical bill, a new contract, it's going to go up probably 100% from what, what you're paying now. 
to pay for all the damages that were done during the, during the winter a couple of years ago, which naturally is being passed on to you and me. See, so we have all these, all these concerns. Worry, 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 worry. <laughs> Isn't this cheerful? <laughs> yes. In Luke 21, 10, then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, right. and kingdom against kingdom. Yes, sir. Great and great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines and pestilences, like COVID, pestilences, and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Mm -hmm. Shall there be from heaven. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sure I know So, and in Luke 21, 25 through 26, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. You have been perplexed? The sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. This is not a we talked about the last days. In some ways, this is not a pleasant time. Mm -hmm. you know, because of all these worries and concerns and fears and things like this, many, many of those things that we never even thought about three or four years ago. You know? Amen. And, and, and yet they have come our way. Mm -hmm. They've come our way. Now the question, after giving you all this cheerful information, the question is, I ask you, is this, how do we defend ourselves against this, against this onslaught of fear? Come on. All the bad news that you Come see on. on the TV or the, or the, or the newspapers or in, anywhere you go, there's always something you have to be, be concerned about. I'll go back to that scripture I read in the beginning, Ezekiel 38 and 7, Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself Thou and all thy company, that means like the family, that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. I guess the subject of my little lesson I'm giving you today is simply guarding your mind. We need to guard our mind. The, third, the thing about the mind, the thing about the mind, the mind is like a, it's like fertile soil. Okay? We have this soil all plowed up and nurtured and ready for seed. And that's where our mind is, especially as a youth. But somewhere along the way, instead of planting good seed, some of us have a tendency to plant weeds. You know? What I'm saying, what I'm trying to tell you is sometimes we allow the, the fertile area of our mind to be, to be seeded with things that are not to our advantage. It's not good for us. Instead of planting productive fruit in our minds, we plant seeds, we plant weed, and those things which are destructive. I, remind, I, I, I remember years ago, my father-in-law had a saying that he, he would repeat occasionally speaking about, about uh, the mind and thoughts. He put it this way, if you, throw, if you sow a thought, Plant a thought in your mind. You're going to reap a deed. Sooner or later, that thought is going to come to fruition, and you're going to act on that thought, whatever it happens to be. Amen. Whatever it happens to be. Once you once you reap that deed, you sow that deed, and you reap a habit. Because you start doing it over and over again. And once we sow a habit, then we reap a character. We we we. we if we, we get to the point that we are known for those actions that we take. Amen. For those actions that we take. And once we sow that character, we reap a vision about what is going to, what is our what our future is going to be. And once we sow that vision, we reap a destiny. And it all goes back to those early moments when those when that those thoughts into your mind. We need to guard our minds. Amen. We need to guard yes, our minds. Yes, Lord. There was a years ago, years ago, there was a 
well known. Uh, he was actually a, a motivator. He, he was he, he was very well known back in the 70s and 80s. One of, I've heard him speak several times. One of his keys, uh, I'll start saying sermons, but speeches that he gave was, you become what you think about. How do you become what you think about? You know, I think we can translate that into English for us in the sense that if, if, if all we think about are worldly problems, if all we think about are the problems, then we become more worldly ourselves because somehow we have to respond to that and we have a tendency to fight fire with fire. Right. And, and then with those worldly thoughts, we begin to, the actions and the thoughts that we project begin to be more worldly. But if we, if we, if we have those, if we think spiritual things, Amen. think spiritual things, think, think of the, think of, of our relationship with God, nurturing our relationship with God, Amen. nurturing our walk with God. Yes. If Amen. we do that, then we will become that spiritual creature God wants us to be. Yes, Lord. Be what God wants us to be. What is the the danger, to a certain extent, of an unguarded mind? Mm -hmm. The danger of an unguarded mind in, in Proverbs 25, 28, I think, makes it fairly clear. He says this, He that hath no rule over his spirit right. is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Right. If you don't control what comes into your mind, what is planted in your mind, what is planted in your mind, those things which are that work against you, the worldly things, will sooner or later destroy you, just as in those ancient days when the enemy, the main goal of that enemy was to was to tear down the walls. Because they knew once the walls were destroyed, they were able to go in and take the city. The things the same thing applies with us today. We have we should have that we should have those walls in our mind that that, that guards our mind to protect us against those things which we know are harmful to us. Amen. At the same time, protects us from those things that are harmful, and at the same time, we have a gate that we can open up in those things which are beneficial to us, those spiritual, the things of God that we need to nurture and, and welcome and want. Those things we can allow in. We can allow in. If we are where we should be with our walk with God, if we are where we should be with our walk with God, 1 Timothy 1, 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. Yes. And if we, if we guard our minds, we keep our minds on Him, yes. we, we protect ourselves from the thoughts of the world, and He will give us that spirit of fear that we worry. We, we, I mean, I'm concerned about the things of the world. I'm concerned. I'm concerned. But at the same time, I know it's in God's hands. Yes. Yes. My future is not dependent upon what happens in the Ukraine. Yes. My future is not even dependent on what you do. Right. My future is dependent on my relationship with God. Yes. Yes. My yes. relationship with God. Amen. And, and if, if I may, if I continue, if I, if I can continue my relationship with God, all these other things, it doesn't mean I just toss them off and say it's no big deal. Right. Sure, I, I mean, I worry about inflation and all the other things, but at the same time, we can back off and say, but I am, I know someone who is higher than all. Right. Right. I know someone who's going to see me through all this. I don't care what happens. I don't care if, if the, if, 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 Russia attacks the, the European Union and suddenly we're in a world con conflagration. It's going to be sad. It's going to be terrible. Right. But at the same time, I am in his hands. That's I am right. in his hands. It makes no difference really what happens. Amen. It does. I mean, personally, as a human, we're concerned. Sure. Sure. As a human, we're concerned. Right. But from a spiritual standpoint, we're bulletproof, folks. Amen. We are bulletproof. If, if, you're, if your heart is where you should be, I don't care what anybody does, what any country does, what any disease, famine, pestilence, COVID, what anything does, 
It's not going to affect your future. Amen. Amen. You see him someday face to face. Yes. Yes. Amen. And hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Yes. And you're going to look back and say, oh, that's true. It was nothing. It was nothing. Yes. It was nothing. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, help us, Lord, to be, to yes. be where we should be. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Daniel 11, 32. But the people that do know their God right. shall be strong. Yes. And they do will do exploits. Yes. Amen. Do exploits. Yes. What does that mean? And ex the definition of exploit is a striking or notable deed, a spirited or heroic act. Are we going to all be heroes? I'm not sure about that, but I do know this. If we are where we should be with God in all of this trouble that's going on in this world, they're going to still look at you and look at me and say, how do they do it? They're living a godly life in all this world. How can they do that? Oh, my Jesus. How can they do that? Hallelujah, Jesus. I say how they can do that. They can do that. We can do that Your because Jesus. our heart is where we should be with God. Yes. Our relationship with God is there. Amen. Our future with God is secure. And if it is, it doesn't matter whatever happens after that. It doesn't matter what happens. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. For though we walk in the flesh, mm -hmm. we do not war after the flesh. Yes. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, right. but mighty through God to the pulling down of strong hope. Yeah. Yeah. Casting down imaginations of every high thing that exalteth himself against the knowledge of God yeah. and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of God. Bringing in every thought, controlling our mind, keeping our eye on Him. Luke 21, 8, 9. And He said, Take heed that ye be not dis deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Yeah. Now, what they're going to, I think what that means is that he's not, someone's not going to say, I am Jesus Christ. But what they're going to say is, Hey, this is the way to go. This is the way to go. Don't worry, those Pentecostals, you don't need to do all that stuff. Here's the way to go. Here's the way to go. And they're going to say, I am the, they're, they're saying, I am the way. And the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. Amen. But when ye shall hear wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass. But the end is not yet by and by. Yes. And when these things begin to, notice what it says, these things begin to come to pass. Not happen, but they're just beginning to take place. That's what he tells us. Lift up your heads. Yes. Your redemption draws yes, nigh. Hallelujah, Jesus. You know, I feel like that if we're looking for a sign that the Lord is coming, if we're still looking for a sign that the Lord is coming, we are really blind. Amen. Because the signs are there. Yes. Yes. The signs are everywhere. Yes. We're living in the last days. Yes. We're living in the last yes. days. Yes. You know, so it, 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 we're, we're, be, we're beyond. We're, we are beyond looking for a sign. Right. Amen. We know that his coming is imminent. Yes. Yeah. I think about it in, in Acts 20. Paul described Paul described the persecution that he has suffered at the hands of the Jews. If you read that scripture, you know, he was Paul was a special person anyway, but uh, he was imprisoned and beaten and, yeah. and, and shipwrecked and, and tempted and Persecute you, you name it, everything happened to him. Yeah. But then he says in Acts 20, 24, but none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Are we undergoing prison time, persecutions? that are like that today. Not really. We really are. But I can tell you this. We are facing wars, pestilences, yes. uncertainty, yes. social unrest, right. political unrest, yes. uh, you know, a, 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 a lack of restraint in social behavior. Yes. There are no standards of behavior anymore. There's no standards of language anymore. Yes. Amen. People say what they want to say, wherever they want to say it, however they want to say it. There are no restraints. Yes. 
in our society today. We're paying the price. We're paying the price for it. And I, I'll say this too. One of the greatest problems we have today is the little thing we're packing around in our purse or in our in our pockets, our access to the internet and our and our phones. That that anything evil that you want to find, you can get on your phone. Absolutely. You can get on your computer. Absolutely. Does that mean we throw away our phones? I don't think we can do that. But I can tell you this, you've got to learn how to guard yourself. Yes, indeed. You've got Amen. to learn how to, to, to restrict those things that you that you that you allow yourself to see. Amen. That you allow yourself to witness. Allow yourself to come in contact with. But all these things that we face, wars and rumors of war and pestilences and COVID and, and the, the unrestricted internet and the social unrest and the things like this, can we say? We acknowledge all that. We, we acknowledge all that's taking place. But I ask you this. But I ask you this. Can you say like Paul? Can you say like Paul? But none of these things move me. Amen. None of these Only things move me. Neither count my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. Amen. Amen. Can you say that? I mean, we know of all the problems around the world. The all the problems that we come into with every day. But can you honestly and truly say that, that is not going to move me? Hallelujah. I don't care what happens in the world, anywhere else, with you, with whoever is involved, anyone I'm associated with, whatever happens, good, bad, or indifferent, yes. makes no difference. I am going to be faithful to God. Yes, he is. I'm going to keep yes, my Lord. mind clean, yes, spiritual. Does that mean I, I'm, I'm, have some, I'm so spiritual I'm not any earthly good? You've heard that this day before. No, we have the day. We have the daily life we have to live. We have jobs and, and, and all the other responsibilities. But at the same time, at the same time, we can keep our mind. The scripture says, "Pray without ceasing." Yes. Pray without ceasing. Does that mean we stay on our knees 24 hours a day? Yes. No, that means we keep that keep that godly attitude. That godly spirit, even as we're working during the day, we can say, Lord, thank you for this. Or, Lord, help me through this. Help me all these things. Stay in contact with him. Amen. Stay in contact with him. Amen. Psalms 18 through 21. Oh, let me back up. Psalms 91 and 2. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. Yes, amen. My God in him will I trust. Yes, amen. yes. And in Psalms 18, through 20, 18, 21 through 24, for I have kept the ways of the Lord. Can we say this? And I have not wickedly departed from my God. Yes. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from mine iniquity. Therefore, hath the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness of my hands. His eyesight. Amen. Help us today. Thank you, Jesus. We, we, the Lord's Prayer said, Give us this day our daily bread. Yes. Give us this day our daily bread. But I say one more thing to add to that prayer. Lord, give me this day the fortitude and the strength and the determination to guard my mind, to keep my mind on you, to keep my my, my senses tuned toward you so I can Amen. follow your spirit so I can I can be blessed by you day by day Amen. And so when I need help I can reach up my hand like this and almost feel his hand touch God help me Lord to have that spirit Amen. help me Lord help us Lord to have that spirit of communication with him Amen. Amen. may God bless you today Sister Amen. Amen.